So I'm going to start talking about something kind of boring. We're actually going to use a keynote here. So we're not going to get into the command line just yet. I'm going to go over and just cover the Linux ecosystem. In other words, some of the larger flavors of Linux that you're probably going to run into. So what I want to cover is just the major families. There are, of course, many, many Linux flavors, but these are the major two families we're going to see. On the left, we have Red Hat, and on the right, we have Debian on the top here. And the other distributions here are kind of downstream of those. In other words, things like CentOS, which is downstream of Red Hat and Fedora, will take from Red Hat and Fedora and add its own unique stuff on top of it. And the same thing within Debian and Ubuntu. Ubuntu will take the latest from Debian and add its own stuff on top of it. This is why Ubuntu is considered downstream of Debian. CentOS is considered downstream of Fedora and Red Hat. Now, I'm not really going to talk about Fedora. This might just be my own bias, the what I see, but I don't really see people using Fedora too much. It's usually either Red Hat or CentOS. So I'm just not going to talk about Fedora. Your experience might be different, of course, but that's just what I've seen. So Red Hat is really enterprisey. It's got a subscription tier. People pay for it. Corporations typically pay for it. If a corporation is not paying for Red Hat, but do want that ecosystem, which tends to be a little bit more stable and security focused, they typically will use CentOS. CentOS is open source and totally free, whereas Red Hat typically comes with some kind of subscription or some kind of paid services. Now, Debian and Ubuntu. Debian is actually completely open source. It's not like an enterprise level of Ubuntu. Ubuntu actually does have more paid services that you might find than Debian, but both are really free to use. Ubuntu is just downstream of Debian, which is why we see Debian on top here. Debian is a little bit more stable than Ubuntu, which we'll get into a little bit. Ubuntu typically has the latest software and is the most popular Linux operating system out there for both desktop and server. All right, so on the left here, we have the Red Hat family. On the right, we have Debian. On Red Hat CentOS, you have Yum as the package manager. And what we really see is that Red Hat is typically considered very stable and very secure. And that's because you typically will have older software on a Red Hat release, even the latest. Now, currently, the latest Red Hat, I believe, still comes with PHP 5.6, and that will probably continue on for a few years without an easy way to get newer PHPs. I have looked into it. Red Hat's site does say you can't get newer PHPs, but my typical run-ins with actual corporations using it says otherwise. They might not have the right subscription. I don't really know what, but it's hard to get new, new software on a Red Hat server. Now, it is possible to add repositories to get newer versions of software, like a latest version of PHP, onto Red Hat, but a lot of times you run into policies that don't actually allow you to install them, and that's typically usually just a general policy, more so than anything enforced on the server. On CentOS, it's a lot of times the same story. CentOS is kind of downstream for Red Hat, so it'll typically have whatever Red Hat has, except, of course, for that managed enterprise level of service. Now, I have these repositories under the CentOS area, but you can put them in Red Hat. It's just, like I said, typically you don't see them added to Red Hat. But there are many repositories you can add to CentOS to get newer versions of software than what comes out of the box. Apple Repository is a very common one, and then there's iOS, Remy, WebTactic. Those are ones that I've used a lot to get latest versions of things like MySQL and PHP. Now, Debian and Ubuntu are very close. It's really easy to find software for them. They both use the apt package manager. and both have many third-party repositories available to get new versions of software, newer versions of software. Ubuntu additionally has a PPA repository, which is just a special Ubuntu thing that makes adding repositories really easy to get the latest software. And we'll see how we use that in some future videos. So this is sort of what I was hinting at. Stability versus the latest software is really the tension you see in Linux flavors. On the very top, we have Red Hat, which is considered the most stable, but it's the last to get newer versions of software. In the middle, we have kind of CentOS and Debian. I consider CentOS a little more conservative, a little more stable, a little harder to get the latest software, really only because that's how I see it used. For a company that doesn't want to pay for Red Hat, they're usually using CentOS, but often they still have policies that say we can't add all these extra repositories to get latest software because they might not be trusted. Now, of course, the level of trust is up to the people making the policies that decide those. It's not really like an official level of trust of packages or repositories. Debian is typically used by people who want a little bit more stability than Ubuntu. Ubuntu always gets the latest software, but things can break when you keep updating your software really often on your server. I still like Ubuntu, and we're actually going to keep using Ubuntu for the following reasons. It's really the most common distribution of Linux for a server and a desktop. It has the most community, it has the most documentation and the most easily found documentation online, and the most available software, meaning it's really easy to get the newest and latest stable versions of all the software we might want. So we're going to concentrate on Ubuntu servers here.